right. Hello. Welcome to Adventures in Lollygagging. Uh, we are playing uh, Twilight Imperium tonight, Genesis System. We are on a short break from our usual One Ring campaign, uh, as one of our players is off in Japan. So we are going to uh, take the take the time to explore a different game. We're going to do some uh, some Genesis, with the, which a few of us have played. Uh, we've dabbled in it here and there. Some people have some Star Wars, uh, some Star Wars like Edge of the Empire experience. Others have uh, Genesis experience here and there. So we're going to put this to the test, kind of mess around a little bit. Uh, the Twilight Imperium book. Uh, or specifically the Embers of the Imperium right there. It just came out uh, a couple months back. Uh, so it's a space opera setting if you're if you're unfamiliar with it. Uh, Edge Studios is putting it out. It's based on an old, uh, not an old, but it's been around for a long time, I would say, the uh, the board game Twilight Imperium. But it, uh, And it's one of those games where like I always seen the board game and I was like, I want to play it, uh, but uh, there's no way I'm going to because uh, that takes too long and there's not enough people around me who want to play it. So... Uh, we get a chance now with uh, with like this role playing game thing. Uh, so I think let's see of the people here. I know Aaron and Evan and I. We've recently been playing some uh, some some um, some Star Wars. I know that uh, Stephen, you've played some Star Wars, right? Right, uh, a Melissa, decent amount. Yeah, uh, Melissa and I, and Ashley. I think you played Star Wars once too, The Edge of the Empire, when John ran it for us the one time. And I think Melissa and I also played Shadows of the Beanstalk, like forever ago we played one session and then uh and then everything fell apart uh physical so, dice yeah yeah <laughs> counting up the good thing is is we're not going to be using physical dice we are going to be using the foundry system for it so hopefully things will uh, will go a little bit smoother and faster uh for us so um yeah we're not going to do this usual kind of start the the game with you know introducing every single character we're going to do something a little different uh but um for those that aren't necessarily familiar with the setting, it is a is very space opera like. Uh, if you are if you're completely unfamiliar, uh, it's not too dissimilar from something like you know Traveler or uh, uh, or Mass Effect, but it's got its own spin on things. Obviously, very space opera like. Uh, so we are playing. It's been here's the here's the gist. All right, it's been thousands of years since the fall of the the Lazax Empire, right? And, and that was like the last major empire to span the galaxy and before them was like the Mahakt Kings or something like that, which is another massive lengthy, you know, galactic empire. Uh, and after the fall of Lazax, everyone kind of retreated a little bit in sort of their own different sections of the galaxy. All these great civilizations is what they, what they were called. And now as the game is starting, the game of the, uh, that edge is putting out is when those civilizations are starting to come back and push back out from their own little corners of space into the wider galaxy, uh, a, a galactic council has been formed. Some, in some, I guess, for some reason, just to hope of avoiding things like the Twilight Wars and stuff like that, where all the different civilizations are battling. And specifically, the council has uh, what's called the Kellerus, which are like a group of special operatives, guardians, diplomats, etc., uh, who go out and do various uh, various missions and jobs. And that is what that's what that's what players play. They play members of uh, of, of Kellerus unit essentially. So everyone here that you see, uh, we'll we'll kind of see them in, in you know in action here in a moment. But they are all specifically members of the Kellerus. So that's how this basically works. Uh, now the other thing I want to do really quick before uh, we uh, oh that's the wrong thing uh, before we uh, before we set up the um, the actual you know first scene is I want a title for your ship, a name for your ship. Uh, I threw out we threw out some ideas before. So so does anyone want to give me an idea? Like what are we going with? What's what's your ship called? I'm gonna put you all on the spot. Uh, I'll like tombstone. scroll up real quick to the ideas tombstone <laughs> yeah. where we look. Or tombstone. rhinestone cowboy. I actually just watched Tombstone like this morning, so <laughs> it's yeah. on the brain. Okay. Or holiday. Ho the holiday. <laughs> the long holiday. <laughs> <laughs> All the I'm not sure that I want to fly around in a ship that's called the Tombstone. But <laughs> that's fair. That's seems like a bad yeah. <laughs> I, I, Usually, I'm a you know, it I'll just, go for it, but I don't know about that. Just makes couple. people think that you're not you, you. You don't have any issue with going down that route. If they you just have think to. we've got right. bodies on board, like nothing really worth getting. Could you know? be Tombstone Could holiday, be. <laughs> holiday of Tombstone, urban stealth. Are we having chat? Okay, last call. What do we got? Give me, give me a name. I'm going to call you. The, if, if you don't give me a name, I'm calling you the Hot Pocket because that is a... <laughs> uh, no. The Bounty. Let's go the with bounty. the Bounty. 
Yeah, I, that has a very good, good uh, yeah, good 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 history to it. <laughs> I love some good mutiny. Good so, uh, <laughs> I did suggest bounty yesterday. Jamie, you guys are in charge of the ship, though, so I don't know how it's going to go for you all. All right, <laughs> so there we go. We're set. Okay, so uh, I'm going to start you off in a, you know, in a, in a, in, like I said, in action here. So here's the here's the backstory for our little our little arc, our three session arc. You all uh, are, are you, you run the bounty. This is the ship. It's a long range scout ship. You've been assigned it from the Galactic Council. Uh, you are not the most well funded of organizations. Uh, you are not the, you haven't been around for that long just yet. However, you have been recently tasked by the Galactic Council to escort a joint species science team led by a Hylar, which is one of the kind of squid like people. Uh, they're kind of squiddy, squiddy heads at least. Uh, and Nazroka scientists. Nazroka are the the species, like they're the dual species. You have the little guy who's like kind of on the shoulder of the cats. Uh, to a remote outpost uh, somewhere somewhere in the Morgallon cluster. However, uh, I don't know why my voice cracked. However, the ship uh, was diverted uh, out of FTL when uh, there was a signal, uh, an alert signal specifically for the Kelleris uh, from a Lodinium mine on an icy planet of Bereg, uh, known... Very little is known of a barrack other than the fact that it's a place with a lot of good natural resources and mines to uh, to to harvest it. But it's a very icy planet. Uh, the alert wasn't entirely clear, but it was basically very panicked, very desperate. And it contained uh, a keyword that essentially is the reason why you all put pause on your current mission uh, to go to go inspect this as as part of that mission was something about the Mahak, this like this like centuries and centuries and centuries old empire, the empire before the last empire, very, very dangerous stuff popping up. So that is that is the setup for the mission. So let's fade in then. OK, here we go. First scene camera. We fade in. It's a dark, frigid planet. It's beset by by storm. We see sweeping winds and snow. Uh, we see sleet and ice. We see the the contours of this colossal jagged mountain that's rising up before us. It's got this icy peak that's trying to pierce up through the layers of sleet and mist. We can see the sky above, uh, above that layer of storm, with these blue and orange stars and a, a moon or two, kind of this faint glow that gives the atmosphere. We see weather and security drones that are just sweeping by here and there on these pre-planned routes. And despite this storm, despite this, this craziness, the speed of these drones flying overhead as well, it's a stillness that kind of hangs in the air as we're just watching this mountain just hanging there, hanging there. And it's suddenly interrupted by this very unmistakable tremble. We see the, sh the actual screen shakes. We see snow begin to come loose on the side of the mountains. One tremble grows into many, each tremble growing in intensity. We see cracks start to spread across this mountain's surface like, like veins until these massive shards of ice and rock splinter and the avalanche down the slopes, we, we hear or feel this muted jolt across the entire range, just cascading all directions. And then that colossal peak that we were just looking begins to collapse inward upon itself. We cut inside the stark, cold mining tunnel deep below the surface of this collapsing mountain where we now see workers and drones and you all, the Kellerist crew who had been waiting for a meeting with the mine's overseer to discuss this distress call. You're being tossed aside, tremors, things falling down, tunnels collapsing, panic spreading. You can see these indentured miners. They're ignoring commands of supervisors that they're fighting for access to a grav lift that doesn't appear to be responsive. They're stuck deep below the earth. You hear the sounds of secondary explosions and collapses from this way or that way. Uh, you can see these gases begin to erupt as seams in the walls open up where they're not supposed to be opening up. We see all these different lasers and diamond drills scattered about in these different locations, either left untended or now kind of going haywire in some way. We see all these different normally like native or you know, native dormant species ripping up out of these tunnels looking for escape, swarming workers as they're doing the same. At the center of it all is you folk. So what we're going to do... So I would like you all to just, as we introduce characters, we're going to do this kind of, you know, kind of action, action oriented. Uh, what are you doing to help to try to escape, to help others escape, to help, you know, quell the panic in some particular way? Uh, so we're going to do this. I'm just going to roll randomly at first and then we can kind of go from there. So let's start. Uh, uh, oops, that's the wrong one. There we go. 
Uh, let's start with you, Melissa. Uh, what do we see Piraloka? What does she look like? And what is she doing amidst the chaos as the, the mines are collapsing and the mountain is, uh, is imploding upon you all? Uh, so Piraloka is a Shakrai. Uh, Shakrai are essentially uh, bird people. Uh, they do not fly. Uh, so she has uh, grayish, bluish feathers primarily. Um, and she has some orangish, reddish highlights around her eyes and around her crest. And you see that she, um, kind of her usual pack, uh, actually is an, an ascender rig. She is a trail stalker. Uh, and specifically, she is actually a mountain climber, face climber, crack climber. So she sees this situation around her and immediately knows what to do. So she is looking for the cracks, the creases, the spaces. And so she is immediately moving. There are other stronger people in the party that can help people, pull them out of rocks, all of that. She is looking for spaces. She's looking for a way up. Okay. Uh, well, we can do one or two. Well, so we're gonna we're doing this as a way to introduce, but also start doing some some roles as well, just so we can kind of get more familiar with it. So I would say, sounds like you're doing. I would say either a perception or maybe a survival. One of those two. Does that sound that sound reasonable? Absolutely, perception. Okay. Yeah. So roll perception. We'll keep it at difficulty two, just average. We'll just call it that for now until there's reason to do otherwise. Okay. So you're looking around, and so the result of the roll, four advantages, but no actual successes. Uh, so Paraloka, like, we can figure this out together. But eff- but essentially what's happening is you're looking around for one of these openings, and, and every time you find one, either either one or, you know, either they're, they're suddenly collapsed as they come down upon you, or you see something from above is starting to clog it, and, you're, and as you're, you're halfway up your climb, and you're clinging to the side of the walls, just inches or feet before you're able to reach up to this uh, this entryway or exit, I should say. Or other times you find another a seam in the side, and as you're about to sneak through it, this this bit of toxic gas just burst out into your face. You've managed to move around significantly uh, in the different uh, you know in, in this area here, this nexus point where there were, you were kind of waiting around for some of the official sur- supervisors and overseers to come meet with you. Uh, so you do have a good lay of the land. What I will say is. You don't find a way out, but at the very mm-hmm. least with those successes, you can kind of pass them forward and you can give, you know, you can spend like we would do in combat, spend two to give somebody else a, uh, a boost die, or you can spend all four to give them two boost die. So when they do their next roll, they might be able to get some boost because you have such a good lay of the land. Okay. So as you're climbing back down, Piraloka, like you can see, you hear just this almost like a, like a machine gun fire and you you look down and you can see this group of miners uh, is essentially getting swarmed by what almost looks like some kind of flying, like like whitish monkey uh, like swarm that's starting to you know r- you know wrap away on them like these long dormant bat flying monkey mixture, and they're pulling them out of the seats of these mines and, you, and these mine this mining equipment. And you see like these 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 various bullets are almost hitting and carving an arc around uh, as this mining equipment is just going going insane. Next up. Uh, let's turn over uh, to uh, Ashley. Uh, Sa Elhena, is that right? Uh, I would say Sa Alana. Okay. Uh, so Sa Alana, she sees these machines. They're going pretty crazy. So she is going to run over and try to stop them, interrupt them, or perhaps swing them over to shoot at these uh, animals that are making this worse. Okay, so you want to you want to go there, what, and what do you look like too? What is what does Sa uh, look like? Uh, so I am gas. Uh, I am a very purple, beautiful, uh, noble gas. But unfortunately, I am currently trapped in this suit, and I have this very very nice kind of crest mod box uh, where I feed favorite movies into, uh, and I pull sayings, voices from there that I like to use, uh, and then also I have a cowboy hat, uh, and I love them westerns. I will one day be a full cowboy. Okay, so you're going after the swarm of these creatures or you're doing something with the mining equipment. So if you're shooting at them, if you just want to start shooting at them to help the guy, we can just make a range, we can make this a ranged attack, ranged light. If you wanted to try to do something to help or quell the machinery going haywire, uh, we can do operating tests. If that's what you prefer, unless uh, there's something else you're thinking. 
let's let's try to stop the equipment because that could make this worse. Okay. Uh, operating, I think, makes the most sense in this case. So uh, if you want to give that again, two difficulty is fine. So so two of those purple D8s. And because, uh, and because Piraloka actually had some advantages, you could have rolled a, a boost die as well. Oh. I, I well, uh, it's too late. I ripped it, uh, but okay. I did one success. <laughs> right, those are lingering out there. Okay, so as you uh, as you head over, maybe you just fire your gun directly up in the air, which helps some of the, the those that swarm flee. I just disperse. yell, yeah, uh, some cowboy saying, which is <laughs> Ashley's uh, looking for her list. We her got notes. a nine. She did. <laughs> she put a chart uh. together. <laughs> she just yells, "Bless your heart." It's not a Western <laughs> saying, and she just her, she, okay. I added some Southern sayings too. And for some reason, that terrifies these monkey, these these flying ice monkeys, and they uh, they they get out of the way. You see, they they no longer are swarming the machinery. You can see the operator is there as well. Between you and him, you're able with your success, as you do have it, uh, to kind of get into the bones of the machine, shut it down. There's been some damage done, as some of these small creatures were like ripping apart a few of the seams. You can see the rock falling down from overhead in the cave, smashed here and there. It's a very massive equipment. It's not some tiny little thing. It's huge. It's enormous. Uh, but you and this uh, this miner are able to shut it down. Uh, next up, no, nope, Pure Logo already went. Uh, Steven, Nico, what are we seeing? Nico. <laughs> Nico, and what are you doing? And there are two booths still out there. Nico is a little green man, uh, really wide-eyed, about three feet tall, uh, and he has a massive gun uh, that weighs as much as he is, he does, and is even longer than he d- is. Um, he has skin that is kind of uh, color changing, so he can blend into his environment. So he only wears a loincloth uh, and a bright purple fanny pack to hold all his ammo. Uh, Nico is always going to want to shoot something if he can. So with all these rocks coming down, could I like start blasting them to try and break them into smaller chunks? Absolutely. There's a lot of rocks coming down. Some of them are small and when they hit people. They're causing little, you know, they're causing damage in there. But then you see these large chunks that are just coming loose. Uh, you can see, especially over by where the grav lift is, as you can see, there's a huge crowd of people that have that are trying to push onto it and it's just not working. The lift's not coming down. Uh, but you also, as you look up, you can see one of the reason why is that there is this huge tumble of rock coming down that lift shaft and it begins to kind of spin and turn a bit. And that's just causing the whole roof to just come down in these huge boulders. And you can start trying to break some of those up if you would like to roll. Absolutely. Uh, and don't forget there's boosts. Uh, so go ahead and take boosts. those two boosts. So and two, we're doing uh, two purples, two, right? Yep. That's fine. Oh my goodness. And I'm just screaming the whole time <laughs> as I'm shooting my rifle. So three successes, four more advantages to pay it forward. Uh, as you're just one after the other firing, and you could see a few of them, like one of them's coming down at you, at those of you that haven't like dispersed and gone other places, and you just fire straight up and take one down. You look over and you can see a, right by where the people are trying to get on that grav lift, another one of these huge boulders starts coming down. And you manage to fire, and then it becomes a rain of smaller stones. They're still getting hit by them, but they're not at least getting squashed by them as well. And then you see a third more comes tumbling down like a Temple of Doom boulder outside of this one shaft that should have gone up to the surface. And it looks like it's about to collapse on this this array of of machinery that could cause like a a secondary explosion. And you manage to catch it just in time, firing, almost unloading an entire clip into it. Uh, Okay. And you still, again, we have those four successes. We can pay that forward. Uh, Let's see. Who is next? Uh, Let's go 50-50. Uh, Koi, Koi, you are next. Uh, what do we uh, see and what are you doing? Yeah, so Koi is probably three feet in the grave already. She's a very ancient extra, which is like a turtle person. She's very, very old. She's kind of living her best life knowing that one day she just might not wake up and that could just be it. But she is a shepherd and she has always been a shepherd her whole career and her job is a take care of her flock in her eyes. And right now this is her flock. So her goal would be, I think, trying to either create cover for the party to like give us more time or to um, create like a pathway through like the mountainside or something somewhere additional that people aren't going to. Okay. 
Uh, there's a couple different ways. You could probably go with that. Uh, I mean, if you're looking for a pathway, perception or survival makes sense. If you're just looking to kind of defend or separate uh, yourself from others, we could just say an athletics check maybe as you're just kind of kind of pushing people around, staying stable, picking people up as you as you're kind of pushing to a different corner of this uh, of this cavern. Uh, okay, so I'll roll. Yeah, I'll roll athletics because she's more concerned about her initial group than and, she has other and people. And there are and there are two uh, two boost die out there from Nico or Nico, excuse me. Uh, as he continues to just take these boulders out that are falling down from the sky, giving you more more All cover. Right, I will use one of them. So okay. Okay. Uh, wow. Five successes. You're doing a, a hell of a job keeping what appears to be a, like a panic is beginning to set in as the workers that were by that grav lift who couldn't get up, they're starting to scatter and they're almost like stampeding over people here and there. You can see some of the supervisors are trying to keep them under control, but they're just getting mo mo you know, mowed over in some particular way. Uh, you can see others are, are kind of swarming up in front of you, help, you know, begging for help here and there, getting to the point where they're just pulling people down. Uh, just panic is, is, is getting there. Uh, you're, you're doing a good job of keeping everyone in your, in your immediate orbit from getting taken down either by, by debris or by just people stampeding over you, but you're still, you still haven't been able to, to locate a way out. Like you're just looking and looking every now and then you see someone climb up much like Pira Loka did. And then just an expulsion of gas just sends them flying and careening across and landing. Others you see are disappearing down these side tunnels, these side shafts, uh, only moments later to hear just something collapse and a scream of agony. And you haven't yet found the way out, uh, but there are plenty of advantages moving forward. I would say we're probably up to three boost die just sort of floating around now. Uh, and that takes us to Krieg then. So Aaron, what do we see with Krieg and what is Krieg doing? So Krieg is a Letnev. Uh, so he has very pale gray skin and silvery white hair. Uh, he's always wearing these circular, thick crimson glasses to protect his eyes. And he's wearing a, a, a matte black uh, bodysuit. Uh, and he's got like a field jacket over it. No visible weapons. He's just like, looks up. Ah, oh, this is a pickle. Saunters over to the side of a of a wall, leans his shoulders back against it, hits his combied. Boy, all you man, all you miners out there, listen up. You know what to do. Stop you, stop your panicking. Get your act together. Do it, use your squads. Move out in a clear fashion. You know where your muster points are. Get to where you've got to go and stay there until we can get you out. Don't mess with the... Let us do this, our job, and, and you move along. Sounds what? Like a leadership? Is that what we're thinking? I was going to go... Trying to go with coercion, but leadership uh, would work too. Either one of those is fine with me, yeah. Okay. And there are a couple boosts die out there if you want to take them. I, I will... I'll just take one. Okay. So with uh with so he's a he's a he's kind of a grifter. He was a covert infiltrator, but it's more about like talking his way into situations. So I've got some talents to sort of help him in this area. So sounds good. Uh, okay, two successes, four more advantages. There's so many advantages floating around. Two more successes, and you do you do notice that a lot of those that have been kind of running up in a panic state, almost like. Like running into Koi and just falling down because she's just so big. Uh, others that are kind of getting in front of Pira, Pira Loka or, or or Nico, you can see they all they all listen as finally someone has taken control. Like you managed to maybe tap into the comms, broadcast it, it gets louder. Everyone can kind of hear it, and people start to calm a little bit. And you do see, although that that lift that main exit out isn't necessarily working. You're right. There are there are yeah you know, there are procedures for this. There are these different tunnels, reinforced tunnels, other places to go. Uh, not only that, there's equipment that can actually help with this in some ways. And so you see some of them are going over and are putting on breather masks and things as like some of the toxic gas that has been uh, kind of venting into, into the into the space is, has been causing people to cough and fall. Others are running over, helping people up and putting their mask on for them. And you do see like the panic does seem to settle down a bit as it's not entirely gone, but it does seem to settle uh, and they are all like the surviving miners here, which are a couple dozen, are kind of looking to you all at this point. Uh, and, you know, in a, in a sort of a 
hoping hoping for a leadership position here or leadership some sort of leadership out of here. So I'll say at this point, you all have managed to kind of calm the initial storm, but you're still kind of looking around. You're seeing so much of this collapse. You're seeing all these different these different chunks of stone and rock. You can see some of the reinforcement beams and the equipment is beginning to crumble here and there. Uh, but the people at the very least are 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 in a and or at least they're they're pliable. They're listening to to command at this point. Uh, so out of order, we can do as any order now since everyone's kind of introduced themselves. Uh, how would you want to go about handling this and finding your way up to the surface? You know, there's a time limit to this probably as this thing's coming down. So how would you all want to handle this? So I think Krieg would look for what appears to be the most senior miner down here. Um, and he would, uh, he, he would look for him or look, look for a group that looks like they know what they're doing and f- actually find out what their emergency procedures are for evacuation. Okay, so looking around, uh, we don't have to do too many rolls for this. I'll, I'll roll over some of this. Uh, you look around, you can see that although a lot of these, these auxiliary tunnels uh, have collapsed here and there, you do see that there is a SAR, uh, a kind of furry mammalian humanoid, very um, kind of ape-like in some ways, but you can see white fur, very like it's got a certain age to them. Uh, they have a mask, a, like a breather mask over their nose and mouth. Uh, you can see they're kind of coordinating what looks to be a small group uh, that is it's getting set to to climb up to what looks like a, a previous uh, auxiliary tunnel, but the the actual catwalk that connected to it has collapsed, and so they're really just kind of scaling the rock at this point. Uh, you can see he kind of wraps a wraps a cord around his waist and he climbs up, and so now there's a cord and people are starting to climb up at this point to that auxiliary tunnel. So taps his taps his con beat. Oh, hello, my friends. It looks like this is our way out. And he's just got he's just his con beat's just now for the Kellerus team. He's like, not everybody's going to get out of here, but we really got to make sure that at least we are some of the ones who get out of here, if you know what I mean. So I'm going to go up this co- up this cable right now, and I'm going to help lead these fellas out. I suggest you come along. I might be behind you. Okay. Uh, we lost okay, Steven. Okay. There he is. There he is. Okay. So are, is everyone kind of okay. going this direction? Everyone, uh, you, you lagged out there for a second. Is everyone going in that direction, climbing up, following this old Sar and following Krieg? Yes, yes. Yeah. Uh, behind me. Behind me. I should go first. I should go first. You you, you get behind me. I should go first. And so I'll, uh, I'll give you every, everybody a boost. I'll be last like usual. Don't worry. So Koi will kind of give her turtle shell, make like a ramp so people can get like an extra six feet up before they... Start climbing. Yeah, that's exactly what happens. You're leaning over, like the the shell almost blends a bit with the rock, and we just see the very light, lightly boned Piraloka, just very, very light, just climbs up on top and barely even touches the rope and manages to kind of get up, uh, and the rest of you uh, as well. And so uh, it, it's not hard at this point. Even even Koi, once everyone's up, you're you're able to climb up as well. It's a very uh, it's a very sturdy, uh, you know, sturdy. Um, sturdy cord they're you know they're kind of bringing you up uh as you uh as you kind of start pushing down the the tunnels at this point you can again you hear these at this point you hear more collapses but there's something kind of odd about it um i'm gonna have i think nico you're an orbital soldier right and yep. orbital drop yeah orbital drop soldier uh krieg as a covert operator i would say the two of you if you want to roll uh a test on this uh we could do a i'll take things like i'll take like i'll take things like science i'll take things like gunnery um anything like that just something to sort of identify what you're hearing uh, even I'll perception is fine okay do we have adv- uh advantages left boost yeah we'll say there's like maybe f- I, I can't remember how many there were there was at least two uh floating from before we can we'll, we'll carry those. i'll over. take one okay and we've got some audience as well so I'll take one on the perception. Yeah, we'll check. definitely treat them. We'll definitely treat audience participation as boost die. Uh, so D six out of the roll. I think there's a max of four you can do per roll uh, if that's right. Yep. Okay. Uh, between Nico's two successes and Krieg's three successes, the two of you very clearly can tell the difference between what sounds like a collapsing tunnel and what sounds like ordinance. What sounds like explosive ordinance. And while it's you know it's not uncommon for mines, you know, for mining equipment or mining companies to have some of this. Uh, there is 
uh, like you, you, you saw where a lot of the caches were. And even when you speak with that, that old Sar there who's kind of helping lead the way, he's shaking his head. He's like, it's not ours. It's not ours. Something else. It's not the first time we found it. Something else. Something else. And he's just like huffing and huffing and, and, and weaving, you, weaving you forward. Uh, but the two of you definitely think that, that there are actual explosive charges going off. But it's, it's, they're different places, different locations. And it's contributing to this collapse in some way. Okay. So... Uh, I'll say for most of the travel, like through this tunnel, uh, it's really not too difficult. Uh, if all of you, do all of you have, have some kind of mask? Do you have either a breather mask or do you have, uh, some kind of, uh, uh, there's another phrase for some sort of suit or anything on. Does anybody here it's just free balling it? Okay. I'm free balling it. <laughs> yeah. No <laughs> space suit. Yeah. I've got my covert armored skin, but I don't know that it has any kind of, Rebreather uh, attached to it. Yeah, check I'm looking at it right that. now. Yeah, uh, Nico and Pira. What about you, Sa? Uh, I should be in a suit because I need to be contained. I have an environment. Oh, that's right. Suit. You're curious. What am I talking about? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So Nico and Pira, go ahead. Uh, as you're you're pushing through these tunnels and it's becoming more difficult to see. People have various lanterns out, but you can tell one of the reasons it's more difficult to see isn't so much because of the darkness, because it's filling up with all of these this sort of dust, debris, gas. You're not exactly sure. Uh, what it is, uh, but how about the two of you? Uh, why don't you go ahead as we're moving through? Let's roll like um, I want to say. I mean, I, I'll say resilience probably makes the most sense here. As you're starting to cough a bit, uh, and I'm gonna say because I'm gonna say it's, this is gonna be a, a three difficulty. So kick the difficulty mm -hmm. up a notch. This isn't gonna go well. No, uh, each can use a bonus dice. So yeah, we do have yeah, bonus, still dice. bonus dice. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I'm gonna Nico, take one. You added one. Yeah. Would you like one, Nico? Uh, I'm gonna take one. Yeah. Okay. Do we have an audience Is dice so one? I yes. can steal for a bonus dice? Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Absolutely. All right. Taking two. Wow, Pira. Oh, That's a wow. lot of successes. <laughs> Four successes and one advantage. Okay. So, uh, okay. So this is what we'll say. Uh, so Krieg, you're, you're, you're successful. You're, you're good at holding, you know, you can kind of hold your breath for a while. You, you, you bring a, you bring a cloth over your, over your mouth. Uh, so you're able to withstand any kind of, uh, any, any of the, the really deleterious effects to this, but at the same time, you do feel yourself kind of starting to cough a bit. So those two threat are going to, are going to show up as strain. So just go ahead and take two strain from that. Whereas, uh, and for a you're fine. Maybe it's just because you're 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 quick. Maybe your metabolism is just so high as a as a bird person that you're you're not really dealing with it as much. Uh, Nico, do you have a success on there? I got one success, yeah. and I'm so small that I'm like right under the smoke. And only and, and yeah, I think yeah, that's what it is. You're probably low enough to the ground that much of the, much of it is fine. So everyone gets through okay. Krieg's just got a, a little bit of cough going on. Uh, after a certain point. Uh, you all finally see as the, the this mist is sort of beginning to spread, you can see light coming from the end of this, this this auxiliary tunnel. You can hear the sounds of the metal beams that are being used to reinforce this tunnel beginning to collapse. There's probably a good two dozen of you moving through it, but one by one, you just burst up out of the slope of the mountain and you're and you can see sky. Now there's winds that are whipping around. You're getting hit in the face with snow and sleet. Uh, the cold, even though it was a quite cold beneath, it's even it's for those of you that aren't in suits or don't have specific protective gear, uh, you are feeling it almost immediately. Uh, but everyone begins to scatter down. As you're looking, though, you you recall. So you all you, you all parked your your ship in a in a, in a flat spot, obviously, uh, and then you took you guys have a couple of uh, ground transport. Uh, I think they're called the Ramblers or something like that. And you took one of those in. You can see that there's a staging ground uh, outside the exterior of the mountain itself, where there's a lot of uh, a lot of different offices, barracks, things like that for these workers. And you can see coming like the mountain itself is just beginning to collapse inward, and you can see avalanches have started to sweep down. And you can see buildings are are partially covered with rubble. You can see there's people that are fleeing as well. You're looking around for your uh, your rambler itself. You can kind of see it. Uh, on the edge of this uh, of this area, 
Uh, but people, you can tell there's others, there's others, these miners and stuff that are making, that are kind of running for it. Like that, you can see there's people climbing on top of it, trying to get into, uh, into your, your actual, your actual ride here. Uh, so what do you all want to do? So, uh, Piri was out front and, and she's basically just going to kind of turn to everybody and just be like, hurry up, hurry up, hurry up, hurry up, hurry up. And she's just going to book it as fast as she can towards our, uh. Rambler. Okay. You get over there and you see there's about three or four miners uh, that are one of them, like they can't get in. You can see a few of them have actual, you know, hand, you know, hand tools or trying to pry into the door itself. A few of them are smashing into the windows, but they're shatterproof. So nothing seems to be working. This thing is armored to a degree. Uh, others are trying to crawl in through the top. There's this little top hatch where you can pop out and you have a gun attached. The gun's not currently, uh, not currently popped up from that turret, uh, and they're trying to pry it up as well, and they just can't get in. Uh, but they are certainly trying. What do you want to do? How many people can be in our Rambler? Uh, I think you guys are you guys are good for like a six or seven. Uh, let me double check for you guys. Something like that. About six or seven. And there's five of us, so we don't have a ton of extra room. <laughs> it would appear. Uh, Koi will rush over there, and as she's running over there, she'll um, go towards uh, Nico and say, Oh, little lamb, you look so cold. And he'll she'll pick him up and kind of stick him in between like her, her, her shell and her like spacesuit and like carry so he can be like a little backpack. And then she's going to go and try and lift the Rambler out of the snow and try to kind of dislodge the people on it to make it maybe a little oh easier my. for us to access uh roll an athletics test uh and i'm gonna use a story point okay yeah so story points if you're unfamiliar with how story points work they're kind of a, a meta currency it goes back and forth between gm and uh and players so players you get basically the pool start with in, in genesis uh, it's one per player and then one on the gm side Whenever a player uses it, it moves over to the GM side. Whenever a GM uses it, it moves over to the player side. There's a couple of different ways that they can be used. One of them is just to like introduce luck or a truth or something like that. Uh, others can be used. There's, there's other ways that can be applied as well, sometimes talents and abilities. Uh, so you're just going to use this to say you do it, like you you are lifting this thing and 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 knocking these people off, this, this immense show of strength. Sure, if you don't want me to roll. <laughs> Do I want you to roll? Uh, let's, no, see. I don't know. I mean, I don't know. let's see. So, so there's a couple different ways. So we can do it as a helping hand. So yeah, let's just say it's a helping hand. So go ahead and roll an athletics check. Use it to okay. upgrade one of your ability dice to a from a D8 to a D12. Uh, and I'm gonna say difficulty. Let's go difficulty three on this. Okay, and that's just doing the plus symbol for the yellow dice, right? Is that to, to upgrade it? Uh, you're upgrading. Yeah, you're upgrading that exactly. The plus, yeah. and then. Okay. Uh, and then add a You're purple. Adding a purple. Right. Okay. Oh, a triumph. Okay. And a I don't failure. Think, I don't think triumphs uh, trigger as a success unless you have another success, but you can yeah, still pass so. it forward. Yeah. The failure still negates yeah. the triumph. Yeah. So we'll say that, Koi, you get up, you get up to it, and you're trying to lift it out and it's not so much a lack of strength but you can you can see as you as you get closer that it's not so much an issue of you being unable to lift it but it's more the case of it looks like some of the wheel beds are kind of embedded and it's fallen into a rut and it seems stuck it's less so it's not so much that you don't have the strength but whatever whatever this wheel bed is, is suggesting that you might not be able to get out pretty easy at the same time, however, we'll say that your arrival has kind of scared off some of these people who are trying to, to break into it. And so they, they scramble out and you just see a, a flood of people just beginning to run away. They're just running away from the slope at this point. Uh, and they've given up trying to get into your vehicle. So, well, Koi, I must say that was an impressive feat there. But I, let's let's get in the Rambler and let's get out of here. What do you say? I'm driving. Okay. Uh, you all, you all are able to, you all knowing how to get in, you get in just fine. 
Uh, you know that there is the, some of the wheel beds are trapped, but Nico, you can go ahead and roll a piling test if you would like. I think it's piloting. It might be operation. Yeah. I'm uh, strapping piloting. some stilts onto my feet so that I can hit the pedals. <laughs> piling. Go ahead and roll a piling test. Okay. So you're able to, uh, as you're, as you're just slamming on the, on the gas as much as you can, you're, you're turning the wheel here and there. Others are, are spreading out specifically the Rambler is, is, is effectively a, like a, like a, it has the capacity. It can carry one driver and six people. Uh, and you have, hang on, I'm sorry. That's not right. Uh, one driver, one gunner and four people. So it can carry a total of six. Uh, so someone can pop onto the gun if they want. Uh, however, you are able to, to wrench it free, uh, Nico, and you are able to start driving, even though you can feel something's a little hobbling, it's like bouncing around as you're driving down this rocky slope, you know, uh, whoever's in the, in the, the gunner seat calling out, getting people to clear and you see others are, are, you know, they're kind of spreading the sea in front of you. Others are coming up and grabbing onto the side and trying to like back to the future, their way down the, uh, down the mountain. Uh, but I'll say with you all getting into the Rambler, driving down the rest of the slope, you're able to uh, you're able to outpace some of the, the the collapse of the slopes. By the time you get to the very base of the mountain, the very bottom, uh, you can see that when you look back up, the peak has has been drastically reshaped. You don't see any more large aval you know, like avalanche sweeps kind of coming down the mountain as well. Uh, you can see there are others who have either taken smaller vehicles or there are others who have just been running uh, who maybe got out before you as they've kind of created a, a little a little zone here and they're helping. You see people are, are creating tents and they're kind of attending to others, first aid units, that kind of stuff uh, as you've reached it and you're out of the immediate danger of this collapsing mountain. All right. So. Looking around, uh, you probably have somewhere in the neighborhood of maybe two, three dozen people. Uh, you can see some folks are giving orders. Uh, you can see others who are dressed very clearly in mining gear. Others seem to be dressed more like officials, operating officials of some kind. Uh, there are a few different devices, you know, there's a few different like travel devices, transport here and there, but the whole escape probably took somewhere in the neighborhood of like, you know, 30 to 45 minutes from below to above and out. What do you all want to do? at this point. Do they have ships and stuff like the miners, like what they're going to, or are they just like sitting in the snow and no man's land? They have, they, I mean, they don't have ships. Uh, they don't have anything like that. So you're in a fairly rocky terrain. Like you had to land your vehicle, like your, your ship, like far away, like a couple, couple right. miles away and you took the ground transport. So everything around here is just what people were able to grab. Uh, so you can see that some of them just grab basic survival gear, but it is, yeah, they are distant in a way. And you know that this is not a, a planet that has uh, major cities. It is a, it is a mining planet. And so you have different kind of corporate outposts here and there along various ranges. Uh, and so at some point, someone presumably you know, from their corporate HQ is going to send, re you know, reinforcements, resupply, something like that. But currently... They're just, everyone's in the immediate scrambling, bandaging wounds, checking pulses, that kind of thing. Uh, Zalana, that is where she will go. She will go help uh, assist people with band-aids uh, healing. Okay, fair enough. She, so does, she does not need it herself, but she likes to uh, learn. Okay. So you head over and they're gladly accept your help. As you can see, there's like a triage tent kind of going on where you see broken bones. You see limbs that are probably going to have to be regenerated or replaced entirely. Uh, you see other folks that have suffered head wounds that look lost. Their eyes are just gone. And there's an array of species here. So there's there's all sorts. You see SAR, you see humans, uh, you see a couple Letnev. Uh, I don't, you guys haven't, you didn't never got a chance to really sit down and talk with like the overseer of the mine, but I would say most, you're, you're all pretty connected. Uh, this is very much like an indentured planet. The people who are working here, like they're people who are indebted. It's, it's, it's a, it's a step up from a prisoner colony is essentially what this is. Uh, and so you don't see anyone here in particularly good shape, but yeah, you do manage to take some time to, to tend to them. What are other people doing? 
So for Piri, uh, so her flaw is greed and her desire is wealth. So those two things combined, she definitely is kind of looking around in the chaos to see if there are any smaller bits of like company equipment or different things like that that could kind of be like pocketed, resold. Because, you know, now is uh, kind of an ideal time that no one's really going to be paying too close of attention to her if there's something that she can kind of try to steal. <laughs> Your bird looking for shiny things. Uh, <laughs> sure. Uh, roll, roll. A pers- uh, actually, no. This don't even roll perception. Roll like a skullduggery as you try to to grab something uh, here or there, uh, and how you do will determine how how worthwhile this is. Bonus because we've got generous audience. Uh, that <laughs> uh, okay. A failure and four advantage. All right. So the four advantage. You, you know, we can. You can put that out however we want, but I'll say with a failure, it's not a, it's not a, a situation where you've you've been caught so much as you look around and there's just like nothing here currently. Like it is, it is very much whatever they could just grab with their hands and go. Uh, you would think that the you know, the exterior, like that, the higher higher up the slope there, there was a much bigger landing site, uh, not a landing site, uh, a staging ground where there might have been more. Uh, more lucrative equipment to steal if that's that was your aim uh, but here not so much it's really just kind of people whatever they had in their hands what are others doing at this point i'm gonna stay in whatever tent has heating because i did not dress appropriately for this climate okay fair enough so you go, you go into it you go into a tent uh i'll tell you what higher or low steven Always go low. All right. Okay, 29. Uh, Yeah, so you go into a tent. You just burst your way into a tent. And you see that there is a uh, a table that has been set up. uh, And you can see spread across it are these various displays uh, that appear to be topographic. So it looks to be like 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 an an array of the the actual the actual, you know, the mining, uh, the mining range here uh and you can see there's a few people that are crowded around it uh all of which seem to be with the exception of one dressed in 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 a manner that suggests they weren't in this collapse or at least they got out very quickly you do see once more that that older sar is there kind of and he's like briefing he's like yes yes, overseer we don't know we saw uh, we saw nothing there was no warning it we I am, we, it was not us, it was not, uh, it was, it, we did not make mistakes, I, I swear, you do not have to, you do not have to penalize us, no, no, we, it was, it was something else, I assure you, and so he's like kind of groveling in such a way, and you can see this Letniv, uh, not too dissimilar from Krieg, uh, she is fairly tall, uh, and even though you would imagine the Tsar is probably much bigger than, than her, uh, when you look, like he's kind of, almost not bowing, but he's definitely genuflecting in such a way so that he doesn't look as, as tall, uh, and isn't really looking in her eyes as much. Uh, but he's the one or she's the one that he keeps referring to as like overseer, overseer. And then she kind of looks back and she's just, and she just shakes her head. Well, we'll just have to see what the investigation reveals. Won't we now out with you? And she just makes kind of this dismissive motion and, out the SAR kind of pushes past you. Her eyes then turn to you and she seems very confused. What do you want? Nico, at your service. What can I do to help? What can you do to help? You can get out of you can get out of the tent. We have we have an emergency on our hands and they don't need I'm you. I'm excellent at strategy. St- strategy? What, what We're under mean? attack, aren't we? I heard mean? the bombardment. There's, there's no bombardment. There are no ships in orbit. Don't be ridiculous. She's oh. shaking her head, looking at you. You said that's what we heard, right? That, that's you what... heard explosions going off ordinance, not necessarily bombardments. Ordinance. Like oh, okay, my bad. Off. I yeah. misunderstood. Yeah. What were the explosions? <sighs> looks at you, looks you up and down, looks you up, and then just kind of. I'm great it. with explosives, too. Who are you? You. You don't look to be part of the mine. Nico, at your service, Claris. Yes, I know your name at this point, Nico. What what, what are you doing here? I said I'm here to help. Oh my goodness. 
Help how? How can you help, Nico? You're very good at strategy. You want to launch a counterattack on a ge geological event. Is that what you wanted to do? If that's what you think is best, I'll do it. Okay. Uh, could someone get this out of here, please? And you can see... It's really cold out there. Can I just wait in the corner? No, I'm sorry. It is a circular tent. There are no corners. Out with you. <laughs> All right, if you need help, just give me a call. She, at this point, is done with you. And someone else who is kind of in the room kind of starts to, to, to escort you, first gently, but then roughly, uh, and just sort of pushes you out into the uh, out, in, out through the tent and into the snow and the ice at this point. What are the rest of you doing? This Freak would actually be looking for the people in charge. Um, Okay, and you you will notice that uh, as as you're looking around, you see Nico just get thrown out of a tent, and you see a, a man standing over top, uh, a human man, burly, tall. He's got the what looks like some kind of corporate uniform on, and he's like, "The overseer does not have time for you, Isuro. Off with you!" And Craig, you hear the sound, overseer. You hear the word kind of pop mm -hmm. up in your in your. He strolls over to the tent. Boy. I'm here to speak with the overseer. And so the guy, you catch the guy, right as he's, he's turning to go back into the tent, Nico's still laying on the ground, kind of got ice and snow. Who are you? We are very busy, as you can tell. We are dealing we are with the, a very we are serious the, circumstance. Zip it. You asked us to come here, man. We are the Kellerus team. We're the Kellerus scouting team. We were supposed to be meeting with your overseer before you dropped your mountain on us. So why don't you show me to your overseer so I can find out what it is she needs from the Kelleris so we can do our job and you can get back to doing your job. He looks he doesn't look offended. He looks confused, like like confusion just comes over his face at this point. One moment and he opens the flap, kind of leans in and you can hear him call out to the woman inside. And he's like, Madame Duquette, there is there's a member of the Kellerus here to see you. Do you know what this is about? He says that we called them for help. And you overhear her voice as well. I don't know at all what he's talking about. Just another. Send him in quickly. Well, hello there, Madame Duquette. Is that what I heard? Duquette, yeah. It's a pleasure to meet you. We were diverted here to this planet to uh, offer some assistance, and that's why we were in the middle of your mountain while it fell on top of us waiting to speak with you. So why don't we get to the bottom of what the problem is here so we can get back to our job? You see uh, next to the Lutnev, there's a, a, a sort of a, a diminutive-looking human man. Uh, he's got a very thin mustache, and he kind of whispers into her ear and you would probably ought to over here is like i this is these are the people you were going to meet i am uh, then then uh, i am sorry uh, it was on your I, we put it on your schedule i think she gets very annoyed and she looks down at you and says um, what uh your name my what is your name i'm Craig mannix of course i'm sure you've heard of me i'm joking of course you haven't heard of me it's a big damn galaxy right it is uh, Mr. Mannix, I can assure you, we did not make any sort of uh, communication. There was something about the Mayhack, uh, civilization, some... Listen, if you don't want us, we'll just notify the Kellerists that they should send a larger group down here to take a look at this entire operation, and we'll go back to, uh, doing what we were doing. Uh, you received, a. Uh, message that there was something about the Mahak here? Yes, the Mahak, yes. You can see, like, her her very stony, like, icy, like, Letniv visage kind of cracks a little bit, and she almost grins. <laughs> that's that's patently absurd, Mr. Mannix. There hasn't been hey, anything... Hey, it was your people calling us, not the other way around, so... She's, like, looking around at the other two guys in, in the tent, and what, what is he speaking about? I mean, we can pull up the comm message from our ship if you if you if you want, but uh, obviously we would not divert here to your lovely tropical environment for no reason. 
That was sarcasm. I apologize. This I is a hellhole. Am. Indeed, it is a lucrative one. Uh, yes, I would very much like to hear this message. Uh, yes, please. Uh, and they're all, everyone, they're all just exchanging looks like, I don't know what he's talking about. I don't know what he's talking about. Like, they don't seem to know what you're talking about. Well, that's very interesting. Do you want to come back to our ship? Do you want me to take one of your men to take, come and listen? We have, uh, we have a lot to attend to here, as you might imagine. As, you have the whole mountain falling on you. That was a, that was quite a show there. That ordinance going off in there, by the way. That wasn't mining. That those weren't those weren't mining explosives. I know. I know my way around some ordinance. Somebody else is screwing with you, by the way. So I've heard. Um, yes, if you could please just hurry, get the message, return as quickly as possible, and we will get to the bottom of this, Mister Mannix. Well, that would be my pleasure, and uh, it was lovely to meet you, uh, Madame. And your uh, muscle and slightly confused fellow over there in the corner. I'm going to go pick up the little green guy, and we're going to go see about getting that message for you. And then as you, oh, that Nico thing was with you. A pet? Te technically, he is a member of the Kellerus. Hey, beggars can't be choosers. We all, you know, whoever they send to be part of the Kellerus, uh, you know, it is what it is. He's a damn good shot, though, and he makes a hell of a pasta. I will take your word for that. Now, if you'll excuse me. All, All right. right. Ciao. So you step out. Nico is like, shit, you know, like wiping himself off. Uh, what are the rest of you doing? What's Sa and Pira and, and Koi doing throughout all this? Mm, I think Koi is just trying to, like, if, because I, what it's, so it's really far to get to our ship. So in her mind, she thinks we're going to be here for a while. So she's probably trying to, like, jury rig the Rambler to make it, like, part inside but then have a tent that reaches outside to like extend our space so she's probably just doing something like that to help out the crew for later okay. and maybe trying to fashion something for the naked goblin <laughs> okay uh yeah i don't think any role really is necessary you've got time you're not necessarily under pressure you can make whatever repairs or, or clean out whatever space you need to kind of get back uh piri or saw was there any i know saw you were you were taking care of the yeah, med, med yeah. tent. I want to talk to some people there who got injured to find out what exactly, like, were they doing? How deep were they mining? Okay. Uh, yeah, you you talk around and um, so I, I'll tell you what. What's what's the approach you're taking? Are you trying to be like charm charm brigade here? Are you trying to be like uh, you know trying to deceive them how, how are you how are you actually approaching this or like are you kind of just is it just sort of more your general the general demeanor as you try to to coax she's, information out of them as she's like working on them uh she's just like so while i fix this for you you must tell me what were you doing i need to know all context everything that could determine your treatment i could change anything tell me everything you know and you're, we'll say you 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 meet a Hakan, one of the the sort of the lion species. Uh, sort of, the fur has long lost the orange luster, and it's definitely, I'm not sure if it's from age or just from being in the mines, kind of covered in this gray soot. And they look to you, and they're like, "I, we were doing our jobs as we are supposed to. We uh, we were mining no deeper than we normally do." I will tell you that there was an explosion we heard uh, at, uh, at the uh, at tunnel X7 and cascaded. And then we heard a second and then a third. Now I will tell you that it is not uncommon for occasional uh, mishandling of uh, equipment, but not to the degree that uh, this appears to have... Uh, uh, caused whatever this uh, colossal collapse is. And uh, kind of leans in, can I, uh, can I trust you? Uh, as they're looking at you, as you are, again, Kreus are, are uh, they're at the galaxy, like they have, they have a reputation, uh, like they're go called ghosts sometimes, is like they're, they're very, like mm -hmm. there's, there's sort of a, uh, some people are a little, 
a little concerned around them, but you can tell he's, he's sort of looking you up and down, trying to figure out a place to like point his eyes. He's just looking you at you directly in the, in the face, but in your natural state, it's not like you have eyes. So yeah, you can see his eyes are sort of moving up and down, taking in the fact that you have like, you look, you have like a holster with a gun on your side and everything. And you're still trying to, uh, trying to like, uh, tend to him. Like, uh, can I trust you ghost? I have not seen you here before. Uh, yes, I am with, is it the Cruis? The Creus? Or Kelleris no, what's their... is the name. Kelleris. Yeah. So just just one thing with the Kelleris though is like they're only about five years old. Uh they are not the uh they don't necessarily have uh like this sweeping, like you don't you don't have like wholesale sweeping control over everything. In many cases, you actually are, you know, very easily outranked by kind of local mm. issues or or things like that. So you're you're and there's a lot of folks that aren't entirely they don't necessarily trust them or they don't trust the Galactic Council. There, there's a lot of, you know, you're, you're still young, basically. It's, it's still sort so of earning your keep. She'll just say then, uh, cross my heart. Your secret will be safe with me. We came here to help. He kind of leans in uh, and he kind of motions for you to get closer. And it's good. Where is it I speak to you? Where is You have no ears. Where oh, is it? Oh, you can talk right here. And she just points to, like, under the brim of her hat. He very uncomfortably leans up, and he's essentially speaking into your forehead. Yep. And he says, my friends and I, my, the people in my group, seriously, this is very strange. I am talking into your forehead. <laughs> I, could, I could move. And no, she gives it, him, like... <laughs> he's looking around very nervously. He's like, hey, we found just, a device. Just be natural. No, just... Natural. I can still hear you. It is not natural to speak into a person's <laughs> forehead. <laughs> Just like near my shoulder, like look Just over, like I. This shoulder. I am. I'm looking at your back right now. So just. That's, what? It. Just trust me. Yesterday, I, yesterday, my group, my mining group, and I, we found the device, explosive device, plasma charge, deep within the tunnels. We um. We took it for ourselves. We are not treated particularly well, as you might expect. Mm. And, and there are a few among us who are, that our sentences, our contracts shall not be concluded uh, within our current lifetimes. So uh, there has been discussion, perhaps we could have used it to facilitate an escape or perhaps to uh, to fake, uh, fake our death, collapse, and then we leave. We had not quite finished the plan. We were not planning to use this for quite some time. We had to arrange transport. We had to arrange equipment to travel across the tundra. So this was not us. And I believe we still have it. So it was not ours. But I have heard that perhaps there were others. Is what I, what I am saying. I can give this to you if you want. Yes, I, I would like. It. I would like to see it. Any any kind of motions down, like eh, my pack there. It, it, it is wrapped up very tightly. It looks, uh, yes, it looks like dirty laundry. Oh, okay. And and she will go and get it. Yeah, uh, and so yeah, and so you go down there. You 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 open up the pack and. You can, you pick up this this chunk of uh, this chunk of you know rags and cloth that has been very tightly round and bound, and as you start to unpeel it, you can see that there is a, 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 a this this spherical plasma charge, uh, un, unexploded. Uh, mm -hmm. It looks to have been modified in some particular way. You're not entirely sure uh, without spending some time kind of breaking it apart. Uh, it is certainly unexploded. There, it, it looks as though it might have suffered some kind of damage. Uh, on one side, it's not, uh, it's certainly not to spec. Uh, so it, you could tell just from looking at it, someone has modified this thing. Uh, so you have that in your possession. Uh, thank you for this. Let me, I will, I will be back. Do not, do not say where you got it from. Please do not mention. Of course, of course. Thank you. And so at this point, we'll say all of you finish your various tasks you meet up somewhere near uh near your rambler and what do you all want to do 
Well, the overseer there, she doesn't seem to know why we're here at all and was just asking for verification for about the message. So I think we uh, somebody's got to go back to the ship and uh, broadcast the message back to the comms so that uh, uh, we can figure out what the hell we're actually doing here because apparently the leadership of this mine has no bloody idea. Well, maybe, maybe the distress call wasn't from the leadership. Maybe the distress call was from someone else. I suppose that could be the case. But then why would it why would we send to speak with the overseer then? Well, that is a curiosity. I'm not sure. Um there was nothing good to, to be found. I tried. I tried to find things. There was nothing to be found. Not here. Maybe somewhere else. Not here. Well, I told loca. you we can't steal from people that we're helping. Well, I'm not I'm not stealing from the miners. I'm stealing from the company. Craig okay. winks at Pira Loca. He's like, yeah, that's okay. These, these owners, that bastard. So personally, I think we should uh, be stealing, stealing from them blind. But you know, that's that's not the Keller's way. I get it. Uh, I have something of interest. Uh, what do you have? What do you have? A bomb. Why? Why do you have a bomb? Why do you have a bomb? I so saw they found one in one of the tunnels. Uh, in the first one that exploded was uh i don't know but tunnel x7 i don't i don't know the importance of that but it seemed to be exit tunnels targeted uh and then uh, this was like the plasma charges that might have been used it's modified uh we should we should break it apart right see who see who what was done to it or who who made it I'm so confused. Did you talk to the person? Did you talk to the person that did the bomb? No, no, they found it. They didn't make it. We don't we don't know who made it yet. Oh, okay. If we take it apart, will we not be able to use it? Um, I we could potentially put it back. After we put it back together, can I have it? Uh maybe. No, no, no. Nico, uh, let's be clear. Uh, we've already discussed this in the past. Uh, altered ordnance and bombs, uh, probably not the best thing on the ship. I'm just saying. I reach into my fanny pack and pull out a grenade. Well, why can I have these then? Nico, you make me sad on the inside. I don't know what Where to tell you, kid. Where does he keep getting these? We keep <laughs> taking them away. I, it's I, mine. I, find them. I shove it back in my fanny pack. <laughs> I find them. It's okay. We're still Thank you, Peary. Okay. Are we going uh Koi? Are you are you okay for another uh you can you might be able to like roll on your back and slide down the hill and it'll be faster. Oh uh, okay. I'll go do it. I'll do the comms. Oh don't worry. Uh, just on a just on a whim here, we can all get in the rambler and just drive back to the ship. Yeah, I would rather drive back and then Check this out, not here, with people in the vicinity. Okay, but, uh, Koi, can I, are you going to slide down, or are you going to go? Oh, are you gonna slide? sure. <laughs> He'll, or she'll uh, get whoever wants to slide and corral please, them please, on her please, stomach. pick me. I can, I mean, all of y'all will pretty much fit there, so whoever <laughs> wants to hop on. I'm going to go to the back of the Rambler. You could sled behind. Someone has to has to drive the rambler. <laughs> That's boring. You can do that. I'll drive. No, Nico. Yes, of course. Go right ahead, Nico. You drive the rambler. Yeah. Craig, you you're a little uptight sometimes. You might want to take this ride. I think you'd find it fun. Sometimes you're a little uptight. You might I'm just going take a deep breath. Bull. Just take a deep breath. Yep. They'll just, just grab fun. Craig in a big bear claw. <laughs> All right, let's go, everybody. Ah, uh, damn. All right. Let's do it, then. All right, everyone's driving. <laughs> I'm, here to, I'm here to tell you. You know this. I'm not wearing any winter clear. G yeah, you know. you got a shell, for God's sake. But all right, let's just let's just ride. Let's Somebody else follow in the Rambler, because we're not getting all the way back to the ship on that shell. Bree, you got to plan ahead. I'm wearing my winter loincloth. <laughs> Again, you make me sad on the inside there, Nico. Very sad. But okay, let's just let's just go. <laughs> all right. So a few of you 
slide down the slope on the back of Koi for a little while. Nico follows in the Rambler. The sliding only goes so far. It's not an unfun amount of time, but it is a fairly rocky range at the same time. And even the uh, even where you're at now uh, is still uh, it's still not the best terrain. But by the time you come to close, there's Nico. And he's able to uh, to pick you all up in the Rambler and you can continue the rest of the way. OK, uh, so we'll just kind of cut forward as you're, you're traveling for a bit. And most of it is descending down like rocky terrain. You're hitting these flatter spots here and there, but you're continuing to move down and down. Like the, the last place was almost like at a, a lower summit. And now you're kind of continuing to go down further and further. Eventually, it's about a 45 minute trek uh, in the Rambler uh, before you arrive at the space where you, uh, you you found enough room to land your transport. You all have what is called, let me see if I can get the name here. I think it's a long range transport is specifically uh, what you are assigned. Uh, but you, when you get there, you're kind of coming up and over this ridge. You can see uh, not very much, to be honest, because their visibility is still really bad as the winds are kicking up, the snow, the sleet, mist, etc. But you can you can see your ship, at least the contours of it. Uh, however, uh, when you when you start to to tremble, almost like you're walking on legs, as you can feel the the, the all-terrain vehicle just sort of shift and move and shift and move. I would say whoever's up front. Uh, it can can see that something a little odd uh, is that the cargo bay door uh, of your ship uh, is wide open uh, and you can see that the ramp uh, has been lowered. When you all left, everything was buttoned up. It's freezing out here. You wouldn't be keeping that stuff open until time. But you see uh, just from that ridge line looking down your ship, but it appears to be open. Well, was my the friends, last it one looks out like we got to lock it. We clearly got visitors here. We just got let's let's go have a conversation with the folks. I'm no. sure we can under, get to an understanding of what they're trying to do with our ship. Yuri pulled out her her bean rifle. <laughs> <laughs> I'll uh, lead the way, and then she'll kind of uh, jostle her arm, and you see this big sh- energetic shield just pop out, and she'll slowly. Kind of like army style, but you know, like SWAT style behind the riot shield. She'll just slowly start going, lumbering up towards the ramp. Now, before okay. we start shooting everybody, let's let's just see if maybe we can talk these guys down if they're still on the ship. So we'll say everyone gets out of the Rambler uh, and you're trudging the last few steps towards the ship. Anybody who would like to, uh, you don't have to, obviously, but anybody who would like to can roll a perception test. Uh, this is going to be a difficulty three. Visibility is very difficult at this point, uh, but you can roll difficulty three perception. You can also, if you want, have one or two people roll it and the others can assist and get a bonus die from it. So if you wanted to consolidate rolls, you could do that as well. Or I can help can somebody. Okay. I have bonus. four greens. Uh, okay. I've got two greens and a yellow. No, oh, that's really Thanks. good. Two greens and a yellow. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Two yeah. greens and a yellow, four greens. Those are both really good. All right, so uh, I'll roll, and Piri, you can take the bonus die from Koi. How about that? Okay. That's good. Uh, then... I can assist with the other one. And he's okay. three difficulty, right? Yeah, three difficulty. It is very difficult to see. Okay. I'm also going to take an audience. Woo! One success, nice. four advantage. Okay. Woo! With a uh, triumph with Piri Loka. <laughs> two successes, two and, successes a and a triumph. I got it. All right. Helped. So the two, between the two of you, and everybody else kind of spotting for you here and there. Everyone, I assume at this point, is you've all sort of described weapons here and there coming out, and you're looking very carefully around. It's a few things you you notice as you start to you get out of the out of the Rambler and begin to descend on foot a bit. You can see a couple things. Uh, so first, the not only is the cargo bay door open and the ramp down, but you are also notice uh, this dark and very massive trail of. Uh, uh, what you think at first might have been oil, but now as you get closer, it's very clearly blood. And then at the base of the ramp, there ser- appears to be a body that has, there's a significant amount of snow has started to uh, pile up on top of it. Like it's been out here, but at the same time, 
just looking around at the weather, it could have been out of here for five minutes. That's how, that's how bad the weather is. Um, you also notice that looking at your ship, uh, which is not a very small ship, by the way, uh, but you can see that there has been some visible hull damage. Uh, you can see the rear starboard side. And anybody here who has like a mechanics background or anything like that would know that's likely around where the engine core is, uh, is housed on the inside. Uh, but with the Triumph, uh, I would say that you would be able to conclude it doesn't look like exterior. It doesn't look like any, anything has been fired down into it. You, you, you see some, you see it, it, it doesn't look as though there's been any, uh, any like beam weaponry or missiles or anything like that hitting the exterior, but, but you could do, you do see some, some damage there. And you also notice uh, the bow, on the bow ship, like the communications array, uh, that has also been damaged. Uh, you need to get up on top of the ship to really kind of look into that a little bit further. You notice, uh, and I'll, again, you guys had tons of success. You did really great on this. Um, you notice on the far side of this landing zone, uh, you can see the contours of what looks like another ship. Uh, you can't really see too much of it, but you see what looks like a wing extending. It's definitely smaller than yours. Uh, but you can see it at the very least there is a, a wing kind of extending suggesting on the far side of this this landing patch there is another ship uh and uh and yeah and i'll say that that's that's all that's what you all have as you're as you're still outside the ship looking around and assessing so now what do you guys want to do with that my skin goes white to match the snow outside uh or whatever the background is um, and I'm going to start moving very quietly, uh, just a bit away from the group so that I, I'm not trying to leave them, but just so that I'm not drawing too much attention. Fair enough. Seeing stealthy kind of flanking around. Okay. Yeah. So Elena will go to the body, uh, okay. and, uh, try to identify, see if they're still alive. Okay. I'm going to roll over, uh, the triumph as well from before. Uh, and I'll tell you that as you get here, so it's very obvious that this is just a torso. Uh, it's human. Uh, and as you like wipe away some of the, some of the snow and ice that has started to accrue, uh, you can see that you don't recognize the face. Now you all had a science team on your ship. Mm -hmm. There were two lead scientists. Uh, so I'll give you some, some sort of backup or some, some sort of background here that's necessary now. Uh, two lead scientists. One was a Hylar uh, by the name of Ungala Finn, and then one was a it was basically a Nas Roca written sash. So those were like a, the lead scientists, and then they had some other folks that were part of the team as well. So you had some people on your ship. You had some some folks, and so they had research research assistants, admins, and they had their own kind of engineers and muscles. So there's there is there are there are a handful of people on your ship right now, uh, but uh, you don't recognize this face. And you don't recognize the dress either. So the, the torso is this heavy, uh, it's going to very, very much like heavy furs. Uh, you're not entirely sure what the animal of that fur might be, but underneath it, you almost see these, these layers of these uh, kind of dark, dark robes underneath. Um, if you want to roll a medicine check, you can do that as well to maybe get some more info. Okay. Uh, he's dead, though. Just in case you didn't know. Uh, I got uh, one success, two threat, one triumph. Okay. So, um, with one one triumph, wow. Okay. Uh, yes. man, triumphs are just going crazy. Okay, so I'll, I'll tell you, I'll tell you two things with the success and the triumph, and then the threat. We're going to do something a little bit else with this. So you saw, you notice that the person just a torso has not been like bifurcated cleanly. Like there's no, you don't see the sign of like a, like a blade. You don't see any signs, uh, that the body, uh, was cleanly cut. You would, you would probably conclude that they were either ripped or torn. And as you're thinking that you notice in some of the, on, on the ramp itself underneath the, uh, the overhang of the ship where it's not getting pelted as badly with the snow and the sleet, it almost looks like there's these, giant kind of bestial prince uh you think uh, like a, some sort of animal some very very large animals tracks have started to maneuver their way onto or up the ramp with that threat however you as you're kneeling down you hear a shot 
ring out from the inside. You just hear a, a gunfire just echoing through at that point. Uh, you look up, the ring, you don't see it where it comes from. It's it's deeper in the ship, but you hear it go off is what I'll say. Our researchers could be in danger. Yep, and Koi will start sprinting. <laughs> Koi starts running. You can see the, you see the ray up. Thump. Yeah. <laughs> the each step as they're running up. Here uh, he's like right behind Koi because like Koi is behind her shield and Piri is behind Koi as her shield. Okay. Weapon out. Piri okay. gets strolling up behind the two okay. of them. Not not in a rush, just sort of a take your time. Stroll. <laughs> okay. Uh, and then Nico, you had you had split out kind of uh, off on your own. Is there anything you're doing before I sort of describe what's going on, what they see? No, I, I think I would follow them up, but at a distance and just changing my skin as I go. Okay. Uh, and then Sa, I would say at a certain point, maybe you, you follow up as well. Okay. Uh, as you all eventually run up the ramp here, you see more of those, which especially when Sa points it out, you can see at least for the first, say, five to ten feet uh, at the very top of the ramp and a little bit once the once the cargo bay flattens out above, you can see the windswept snow and ice that has left a couple more of those large bestial tracks, whatever they are. Uh, you can see them. Uh, but eventually they dissipate as you can no longer see the snow. It doesn't the further you go into the cargo bay, there's just the wind hasn't been blowing it in that far. Uh, but you all see that there's definitely been signs of violence in here. So there's certainly, uh, you're seeing like blaster, uh, blaster marks on, on, a, on a few of the walls here and there. Um, you can see the second Rambler, like you, you carry two on the ship, uh, and you can see that it's, uh, it looks to have also taken a few hits here and there. Uh, it still seems to be, you know, intact, but it definitely seems to have suffered some, uh, some, some some shots here and there as if maybe someone was using it as covering as cover fire or whatever. Uh, you also know that there was a, the, the science team brought a not insignificant chunk of specialty equipment and they've been storing it in the cargo bay. That seems to be partially missing. Like you can see some of it's still here, like the bundles, these bundles that were wrapped up here and there have been like ripped apart and scattered a bit. And you can see some of the residue of it here or there. Uh, and, uh, and there's a couple spots here and there throughout where you could just quickly, very quickly see signs of blood trail here, smear here, smudge there, that kind of thing. Uh, if you look around for the signs of that shot, you don't see anyone in here. There is like a catwalk up on the second level. You you do a quick look, Koi, and, and Pira as you're first in. You don't notice anyone up there at all. Uh, you do see uh, doors, you know, these, uh, these bulkhead doors that kind of go further into the ship. Uh, they... They both appear to be open. So the top level catwalk, the bottom level cargo bay, everything's kind of open. And we uh, uh, reach anybody on our comms? Uh, you, you get on your comms and you try to call out. You know, you, you put out names, you call out for one of the lead scientists, you call out for some of the other folks that you've, that you've met. No response, uh, none whatsoever. Uh, and I would say that the the rest of you, if you're, at a distance uh, from each other and you try to communicate with each other. So maybe Nico, as you're going in, you can see Cree kind of doing the classic, like kind of hold the hand up to the ear, communicating, etc. You don't actually hear him come through and the rest of you as well. It's almost as if there's calm jamming going on. It seems like Krieg. So Krieg turns back and verbally says, I gotta say, it looks like we've got a pirate problem. So uh, let's hunt him down, get our gear back. Find our scientists and you know uh, have a conversation with them. Figure out what uh, what it is that they w were willing to die for. Um, Saw wouldn't have followed them into the ship. She would have started to skirt around to get surveillance on that other ship. Okay. Um, sure. Uh, yeah. If you want to head out there. Um, so it's not too far away, but there is a little bit of distance between. Uh, but we'll start there as you you move across. Um, when you get there, you notice that there is there's only one. Uh, you can see it's much like the body. It's got this layer of uh, of snow and ice. It's very small. It's kind of like an escort fighter in some ways. It doesn't look like 
it's not the type of ship that has rooms in it. Uh, there's, it could possibly fit two people, maybe some storage here and there. Uh, but it looks, uh, it looks to be there. Um, if you would like, you can roll a perception. Do we have anything left to use to assist? Yes, we do. We are fine. So and how would I do that on here? So there's, okay. there's you plus the little blue square. Okay. And the difficulty is still going to be three outside because of the visibility is really, really poor. Got it. Okay. Can I, and I can use two of the blue squares? Yeah, that's fine. Audience stuff. Yeah, that's fine. Cool. Okay. Yeah. Uh, one success, one advantage. Okay. So I'll, I'll say this, that as you're coming up, you, uh, with your success and with your advantage, I'll, I'll effectively just give you two things. One, you notice there is a lump in the ground uh, and some slight discoloration. And you also notice what looks like the there's an uneven amount of snow and ice here. Uh, so the latter of those two things makes you think there might have been another ship or two. It's not just one that landed, but there could have been one or two more. Uh, and then the lump, as you, you bend down and you look, you see a roca. Uh, a Roka that you know the name of, Sash. So the lead scientist, one of the lead scientists, was written Sash. So there's Nas and Roka. They're they're a joint pair. That's how they. That's how this those two species function as they work in symbiotically. Mm -hmm. uh, Sash is the Roka, uh, and they are here. And you can see that they took a terrible gut wound of some kind. Uh, immediately, you think they're possibly alive. Very faint pulse. Possibly that being so cold out here might have actually saved them, but it looks like they took some sort of some sort of terrible gut wound and are on the ground. Uh, I would like to immediately attempt to heal them. Yeah, that's fine. You can go ahead and roll. Uh, this is going to be a hard medicine test. So that's a purple, purple three. Purple three. Okay. Ooh, but I only have two purples. Uh, there's a button you can use to click and add an extra. Okay. So there's a, the, use the plus as opposed to the up. The up upgrades the difficulty plus adds a second or another uh, purple die. Okay. Do you need to use another audience die, Mel? Okay. Okay. Three success, two threat. So here's what's going to happen. You, you're leaning over. You're looking at them. Do you have, yeah, I guess you have, you have some sort of med kit or equipment, right? You have something. I, do, I know yes. you do. Yeah. We went over your sheet before. I can't remember what it's called. Medicum. Is that what it's called? Uh, Medicum. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, you get your kit out and you're doing the best you can, uh, to help them. Um, you're, 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 you're trying to get them conscious, trying to get them conscious. Uh, and as you, uh, as you, as you're holding the pulse, you know, getting your equipment out here and there, you can feel some warmth beginning to come back to them. Their eyes open like really bright all of a sudden, uh, really wide. They put their hand on your, on your shoulder and they just, you can feel the claws kind of dig into your shoulder a bit and they throw you and you hear the sound of blaster fire. And as you turn around, you can see there is a figure in the middle of the snow moving back towards this this ship that is firing at you and this roca at this point and we'll say that's where the threat will come in um oh god those of you on the inside uh the comms are down uh, as you, your comms are jammed so you're not going to necessarily hear saw uh, but it is possible you could hear the sound of the gunshot uh, so if any think, of you would like yeah i think Krieg and i are the only ones with comm beads anyways okay all right. So if that's the case, if anybody would like to roll perception, uh, I will say two difficulty because it's just it's just audio. You're just trying to hear for it. But I will say a setback dice. And so add one black uh, black die since you're inside as well. So. OK. Uh, that was a all, mess load of dice that just got rolled. <laughs> yeah, all of you looks like passed. Uh, so I'll, I think it's Pira, Loka, Krieg, and Nico. You all hear the sounds of a shot going off again, uh, coming from outside. Uh, and Krieg, you at the same time as that 
as that shot firing, you look up and on the the catwalk that's uh, above the cargo bay, you see a figure emerge and they're not not too dissimilar from that torso you saw below, kind of covered in furs. They have a mask on, like this this mask with bright, bright red eyes. And they lower the gun like they're about to fire at you all. So uh, since all of you perceive, we're just going to go into a combat then. Let's do a, let's do a combat then. Uh, so okay. you've got two things going on. Uh, so I'm going to... I'm just going to move some tokens around on the board just so we can keep track of things, and then we'll walk through how this how this will work. So, saw you're out there with this fella, and then the rest of you uh, are going to be inside with a few of these others. Okay. All right. So right now you only see the one, but the way Genesis works, minions and and rivals and things like that. So. Uh, Inside is essentially a minion group, and outside is uh, something else. So let me set up the queue. So if you've not played this before, or if you don't know how this works, uh, the way initiative functions is I put you all in the queue, and then uh, you we roll, for, we roll for initiative. Initiative, you either roll, it's either going to be a cool test or it's a vigilance test. Cool specifically is for when you know that combat's going to happen vigilance is when you don't know it's going to happen so in this case i think vigilance makes sense so if you go over to the combat encounters tab in foundry you should see your name you should see underneath your name there will be cool you can click that to toggle it to vigilance so if you just click the word cool it should toggle over to vigilance uh it should if it doesn't i'm sorry where are we seeing this in the combat encounters tab on the right hand side, the things, the two swords, the swords. Okay, yeah, I am in combat encounters, and then click the dice on your name. Oh, let me just switch it over to vigilance. I guess you guys can't see the vigilance. Oh, I see. I got it. Yeah, once you click the dice, then it pulls it up. Yeah, okay, go, got yeah, it. go ahead, go ahead Thank and you. roll that. So what's going to happen for those of you who are not familiar? If you're watching this, uh, they're going to roll initiative, but initiative, and I'm going to also roll initiative as well. Uh, so. What happens though is like we assign slots, so PC slots and NPCs, NPC slots in a second. And so it's not necessarily going to be whoever goes, you know, whoever has the higher role goes first. It's just going to be this team goes here, that team goes there, and basically anybody can do it. And like you can kind of make the choice. Creek, did you roll? There you go. Okay. All right. All right, rolling. I got one more to do. Okay. Ooh. All right, so there are, so it's good. initiative is going to be, so if you guys still have the tab on, just to kind of walk you through how this works, the, uh, you'll see like the reds and the blues, and whenever it's that person, you know, whenever that slot comes up, there's the opportunity for somebody wants it, they can kind of claim it at this point, and then the PC slots go. Uh, so um, I got one, I go first, so one of the yeah, NPCs gets slot. to go first, and then we will have a bunch of PCs go in order. So um, I'm going to just go ahead and have the one that's out with uh, with Sa uh, take a shot instead. So uh, Sa, uh, you are out here by yourself with a dying Roka who is down their Nas. Uh, they managed to knock you out of the way uh, of, uh, of a shot. Uh, but at this point, the figure that is dressed in this uh, uh, you know, this kind of, uh, this, this heavy, heavy furs. And then it's got that, that kind of mass that almost glows in the snow, uh, is instead, um, I think they're just going to shoot at you again, uh, as they're kind of moving and shooting. Like you, you can definitely tell they're trying to get to that, uh, that ship over there. Um, but they're shooting at you, uh, you know, in, in route. So they're going to, fire their beam pistol at in your direction. Uh, do you have any do you have any defense or anything? Do you have any range defense, Sa? Okay. None. So the one thing the one thing I'll say is because it's so difficult to see out here, visibility is so bad, they are gonna get a setback die onto their roll here. Uh, so I'm going to fire. Uh, I'll put this back on public. 
And the first first attack is a success. Uh, so uh, so it is a success. It's got five damage, uh, three critical. I do they don't have enough advantages to uh, to actually trigger its critical. So Ashley, what you'll Pierced. do? Do you have so in this case? Uh, I have four soak, whatever that means. Okay, so so soak is normally a flat reduction. Uh, this weapon does have uh, have pierce. Um, okay. so it's got pierce two, so two of your soak, uh, won't apply. So okay. eventually you'll take, uh, so you'll ultimately you'll take two wounds. So, got it. so go ahead and log that. Um, I don't have any advantages, uh, but I, there is a threat. So if you guys want to look at those helpful handouts section again, there's a bunch of handouts for like spends. So if you want to so, do the spend or that oh, spend. okay. Two wounds. There we go. Yeah. Okay. Uh, all right. So they take a shot at you. They fire. The second time they hit, uh, the rest of you on the inside are kind of aware that that stuff's going out on outside and inside, and if, and essentially they they just they fire and they're moving towards the uh, towards the the ship. So on your turn, you get an action, uh, you get a maneuver, and you get as many incidentals as you want. Uh, so all of that is in that handout stuff. So now we're going to go to the next one. So first PC slot. There are four PC slots in a row. Anyone can go in whatever order. Uh, at the very, you got you. So you've got enemies on the inside. You've got an enemy on the outside. Who would like? Who has an idea or who wants to go first or anything like that? So in terms of a, a question. So in terms of range bands, where would you say the catwalk is from where Puri is kind of set up behind Koi? I would say everything in here at this point is medium. I wouldn't say it's short because they're they're vertical, so I would say medium. Okay. Um, I'm going to imagine that we've done this before. Um, hopefully, Evan, you're okay with that. Um, where kind of Peary is going to kind of kind of have her beam rifle up and is kind of using you know kind of the shell as kind of to help aim. Um, and so Peary is going to try to shoot the one that is on the catwalk. Uh, the beam rifle uh, has long range, so that shouldn't be a problem. Okay. Um, so you want to... So there's going to be... These guys have that you're firing at are going to have one defense, so you're going to add one black D6 to your attack. Uh, they have one range defense uh, for so, when you fire. Okay. And... All right. Um, and then I will... I'm just going to roll this straight and kind of get used to how this works. Yeah, it's fine. Okay, so I am. I have a thing that I'm going to do. Um, so I have an, an option. So I have what is called hamstring shot. Okay. So when I'm, uh, this is once per round. Um, when I do a ranged combat check, I can have the damage before soak. And... Basically, instead of doing all the damage that I could have done, I can immobilize the target. Okay. Uh, so instead of doing have... eight damage, I can do four. All right. So this is this is we'll say this uh, as you've got five successes, two threats, and one triumph. So let's so there's different things that you can purchase. It's good to go through this at least once at first. Sure. So for your triumph, if you look, uh, there is that handouts, it's what you can spend your advantage and your triumph on. Uh, so triumph, there's a bunch of different things that you can trigger since you had a successful attack. So you can look through that if there's anything in particular that you want to do. Uh, so it could be anything from helping out the next, you know, the next person to go, things like that. It could be upgrading difficulty of the character's next test. It's lots of different things you could potentially do. It's kind of whatever you want. Uh, for the threat is you also have two threat. Uh, so what I'll just say very simply, uh, as I'll say, you suffer two strain, uh, as one threat equals one strain. If I want, as that's what I'll purchase it as. And so we'll say two threat, uh, two strains. So just take two strain for Piraloka as, uh, as you fire the shot. The other thing, uh, you are having a damage. So it was damage eight. So you're cutting it down to four. And then you fire applies. Yeah. So you fire up. So, so Cree calls out or points out that there's someone coming up through the catwalk, getting ready to fire. You quickly, you know, balance your gun on the back of on the back of Koi. Fire a couple times up. You take the first one out uh, immediately. 
you just their head you just catch them right in the head and you see this guy fall over slam onto the ground but then more start coming out from behind so he wasn't alone and that's where we'll say the second one you manage to immobilize so you shoot the second time isn't a headshot like the first one was but you catch them maybe in the leg and now they're immobilized so this is a minion group so effectively you took you know you, you've reduced the minion group size is sort of where we're at okay okay all right uh anything else so did you, did you know what you want to do with your triumph um i am uh koi how squishy are you not squishy. <laughs> not at okay. All, all right. Then I, I'm going to stay put. Um, because I'm not entirely sure, I'm just going to recover one of those straight. Okay. So I took a straight and I'm going to immediately recover one just to keep myself uh, frosty, as they say. All right. Uh, okay. So we'll go to the next. Uh, so the next PC slot then comes up. So we have three more to go and then we're back to NPCs. Does anybody else want to pop in on this? Cool. If I go. Sure. All right. Uh, oh, that was claimed as Saul. I must have her character by accident. Um, anyways, I am going to maneuver to dive into cover, maybe behind like a structural support beam or a couple crates uh, to give myself defense one. And there's big old um, Rambler here as well, too. You can hide behind as well. Big old what? Oh, yeah. The, the, Rambler. the second, yeah, the I'll second hide behind transports that. in here. Yeah. And then I will just start blasting with my blazer rifle. Uh, and I'm I'm still camouflaged, but I just start laughing maniacally as I'm pulling the trigger wildly. Um, this is inaccurate one, and you said they have defense one, which would mean I have two setback dice. However, I have a knack for ranged heavy, which removes two setback dice from my ch check. Well, so it should that. be a straight roll. Okay. Um, and I will take an audience die, too. Uh, they, they specifically said they don't want you to have any. <laughs> oh, well... I saw it. Okay, I'll take it back. Somewhere. <laughs> Let's see how I roll here. Is it not rolling? I haven't seen it pop up. Uh, I just got a attempting to reestablish connection, so it might just be lagged for a second. Yeah, mine just froze. Oh, dear. All wonderful sorts of stuff lately. All right, so you're just rolling with this a thousand times, so it's just going to... It's going to pop uh, I'm rolling. through. A, <laughs> We're going to have yeah. a screen full of Your blazer rifle? Comes through. Yeah. Uh, okay. Should be two yellows, two greens, and a blue. Yeah, it's frozen for me too. Okay. Let's Want me to refresh chat. real quick? Chat, how's everyone doing? Uh, I think it's just the whole <laughs> table's lagging. <laughs> it's very interesting. Like, yeah, we, I don't think lagging. we've had a straight up failure yet. Like, we've had no successes, but just the balance yeah. of everything. Like, we'll have some threat that comes up, but we've generally been able to like move things forward. That's one of the things I really like about the Genesis system. I mean, the dice are hard to get used to, but it's such an interesting and dynamic combat situation with advantages and setbacks and everything that it just makes for a very interesting play. There it goes. Um, All right. How'd you do? Uh, nine damage, three critical, one success, one advantage. Um I will spend the advantage to add a blue to the next allied character's check. Um, and I have a lucky strike talent. Um, so I will uh, spend a story point to add damage equal to my character's ranks to the combat check, which will add an extra two damage. Uh, so it should be 11 damage total. All right, so... The second one that Piraloka got with her second shot, but didn't quite just kind of wing in the leg and they're grabbing on at this point, their leg nearly gets blown off. They're sort of immobilized here. You managed to take that one out. No issues. The second shot goes through. What was the total damage? Uh, 11. And do you have any piercing or anything on it? I'm still really, uh, it, oh, there it's rolling everything now. Um, <laughs> it, it said critical three. I don't have piercing. No. Uh, okay. Vicious, too, actually. What's Vicious? I forget. You hover over it, it'll tell you. You hover over the in the chat uh, window, it'll tell you. When it results in a critical injury, adds 10 to the crit critical roll. Okay. So I don't think that... Matters. I will tell you that you manage, as a third one of these, they're like kind of coming out, rushing towards through this... Like, you take one out, the next one is 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 leaning through the that catwalk door, that uh, hallway, getting ready to fire down and you just catch it again. So you actually take two of these out. You reduce the group size down to one effectively. So between you and Piraloka, you've taken this group size down to, to one. 
All right. I am still reloading. So uh, who wants to get rolling next? so many dice for me? All those rolls I put through are coming in. So Krieg isn't a gun guy. He doesn't have any ranged attack. So he should not be the one to go next. Okay. Um, Koi can go. I just can't roll anything, but we'll see how long it takes. Um, I'm trying to think. So I only see one guy left up at the catwalk. Yeah. So there is a basically a group, like a minion group of four yeah. up here. And you've heard the shots on the outside as well. But uh, but you have immediately you only see one one more person left in here. Yeah, and I know that Saw never came in if I turn around. Um, she will turn around, look at Peary and say, well, looks like you guys got this. And then she's going to sprint outside. I'll use uh, a second maneuver and take two strain to double sprint and try to get as close as I can outside to saw and try to see what's happening. Cause obviously there's more shots outside and I don't want her to be alone. So, right. So I'll say with your, with your, with two maneuvers, two movements, you're basically moving two different bands. You're, you can effectively get to like long, you know, kind of long range. You can see contour shapes. You can see that there's a second one that's firing. Uh, it, you'll, you can see that someone's pointing a gun, the contours of it in the direction of saw. Uh, so you're, you're, you're able to see some of it. Uh, so I'll put you, we'll say with those movements at long range from saw at this point. All right. That's good. I'll try to right. catch up next turn. I am still reloading. I don't know how the rest of you are doing. Yeah. Ditto. Okay. Uh, keep talking. I think I actually have physical dice of this one. Sec. I just can't even see any of my stuff to like be like, this is what I would like to do. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's it's the like downloading world data. Please wait. Yeah. Um, I think it's I'm hilarious just, that I'm just watching all the Nico's behind. dice rolling. <laughs> yeah. Oh, you're in to at least see that. At yeah. Yeah. No, they're rolling it. over and over. <laughs> I don't know how many times you hit that oh, button, no. but there's a, it's going a I lot. Stopped it's not hitting working. It after da, 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 seconds, but I clicked it a lot that first time. Uh, it's got to be like eight or nine so far. You got some <laughs> really good happened. rolls too. <laughs> this is what happened. I love that Peary went to hide behind Koi for cover. And then Koi's like, you got this. And, and it hasn't away, been their turn the yet. So she's just like, eek. You incapacitated <laughs> one of them. So there's only one turn coming, at least. Thank that you. Is yeah, true. it's only going to be one, one is, guy. One's dead and one's immobilized. Yeah. So there is that. Well, I think, yeah, I think the immobilized guy, though, got shot in half, too. Yeah. Oh, wait, Nico. you guys killed both of yours? One's dead? I think so they took three total. Three are dead. Yeah, yeah four down so to one. It's, so basically, it's a minion group, Ashley. So like oh, there okay. are... Yeah, so you have uh, a rival have, out with you. Yeah. The other one has a minion. So yeah, I'm helping you with the versions. rival. Thank you. All right. Maybe so you might I actually be dead have before I get there. physical dice from Genesis. So I'm going to go ahead. I, and I have the PDF up here with my, my stat block. So uh, let's see. Who oh, yeah. do I want to target? Well, isn't, don't we have one? We have more one more turn. Do you yeah. have one more? Okay. So who yeah. wants to go then? Uh, I was hoping to go, but I don't have access to any of my stuff. Okay. To even know which dice to roll. Yeah. <laughs> Unfortunately, right. that's the problem. I don't know any of my stats. Nothing. All right. Uh, I, I can know. see your character sheet. Uh, so what are you trying to do? I'll tell you what you're supposed to roll. Um. Well, I was hoping I could uh, shoot and then take cover. So you can, so yeah, you can, you can shoot back. Like there's nothing wrong with you shooting back. Um, you were the rules, rules of the game. You were, uh, you were just, you were caught unawares from the threat with your medical equipment out. So you probably mm -hmm. need to spend one maneuver to draw. I have quick draw. So that oh, okay. negates it. Okay. So you can quick draw your gun fire. Uh, then it's kind of an open landing site, but if you wanted to spend a story point, you can introduce the fact that maybe there is like a, you know, a rock, like a chunk, a chunk of rock here or there, and you can dive behind that for cover if you wanted. Yes, I will do that. Okay. Uh, Steven, can you roll uh, an attack? Uh, let me get you. This one's good. This one does have defense. Let me get it for you. So um, I, can I can't actually roll from her sheet. I can just see it. Oh, no, I can. Never mind. Okay. Uh, yeah. It does have a defense. Yeah, it does have defense. I'm just pulling it up now. All right. So and defense. So this thing. I think I have. I don't know if it applies. Can you click on my talent basic combat training? Can't I spend some points or something to negate defense? 
Oh, it just kicked me as soon as you asked me to click on it. <sighs> Maybe we just have Jeff go. Uh, well, I mean, what we can always do is like it's been two hours. We can just call it. This is this session has been cursed with various tech malfunctions. <laughs> Really has. So this isn't as I, I there was there's more I wanted to do for this session, but like at this point we're just going to be sitting around staring at a spinning wheel because Foundry or Forge or whatever is falling apart. So I say let's just go ahead and call it, and we'll uh, we'll pick up. Sounds good. Next time. Oh yeah, uh, I just got kicked back out again with uh, with Ashley's turn. Hopefully it'll keep the all the data and stuff like that. So yeah, let's just go ahead and call it. Uh, yeah. All right, we'll just make notes on the order, and we are uh, in danger. The encounter should yeah. still be there. Yeah. You should be fine. Cliffhanger. Okay, so yeah, let's call it. Uh, all right, why don't we do kind of a quick uh, roundtable for folks if there's anything going on. So Aaron, uh, what do you got going on over at Garblag and everything? So uh, at Garblag at the moment, I believe the only game we've got next week is Wednesday, 1 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. We'll be back with Warhammer Fantasy Roleplay 4th Edition, Shillings and Crossbones as my insane which pirate child is uh, on the Sea of Claws with a bunch of people that uh, are completely terrified of him? Fair enough. Fair enough. Uh, so I'm gonna I'm gonna jump right to Evan and do the Matt thing. Evan, you got anything going on? No. <laughs> <Fair> <laughs> enough. Uh, as for the rest of us, uh, on Monday we are back to Holler for Savage World. You can see Melissa and I in that game. Uh, Steven, what's going on on Tuesday? Tuesday, we're playing more Forbidden Lands. Um, it's the sinking of the Titanic in ice cold water. Uh, so I didn't get the TPK last session, but uh, nature will take care of it this session. Right. But nature will get credit for the TPK, not you. That's right. Is that how that works? <laughs> as long as it happens. You know, I've been so far, for too long. So far, the cold <laughs> has been much more brutal than any of your monsters. It really it's has. <laughs> it really has. It really has. I like how much of a, have a, have a team player you are. You're like, you know, I don't need credit. I just need the TPK. I don't care who does it. That's that's a yeah, good team it, player. It's all about the results. Absolutely. <laughs> uh, next Friday, we are going to be doing a one shot of Black Sword Hack. Uh, so if you want to come check that out, uh, a lot of familiar faces. I think Jeremy's going to jump in with us as well uh, as it's an OSR kind of game going on. Uh, let's take a look at that. Uh, next Saturday, hopefully, uh, tech permitting, we'll be back to this as we're going to be doing this for three straight weeks. Uh, and uh, we'll see where we go from. And uh, yeah, that's about it. Check the YouTube page, Adventures and Lollygagging, follow the channel, all that kind of stuff. Uh, hopefully tech stuff irons, you know, for foundry and forage are all working next time. So everything will be fine. Uh, we're going to go ahead and raid a boys from the Baltic star. They're playing Troika game. I keep saying I want to play, but I never actually run. So I'm going to go ahead and raid them. So click the raid. We'll see y'all later. Bye-bye. Good night.